so i will be now <coughs> i want to put the slides on kalam okay so let me open kalam now so this is course uh, slides add folder course uh, part 1 co1 and 2 slides learning material <clears throat> let me put the slides uh week number 1 introduction These are the course lights. Save and return to course. Uh, okay. So course lights are available now. Okay. Um, and this one is assessment. this will be assignment number 1 uh, <coughs> assignment test 1 test number 2 <coughs> sorry and then presentation <coughs> so uh, these are uh, the assessments and these are the course slides so we have covered uh, the introduction section uh, of the week number 1 advanced manufacturing and today we are going to cover uh, week number 2 uh, if you open the slides then week number 2 is advanced machining process <coughs> so today you are only present uh, mr uh happy is also present okay looks like never mind so let me change this to here okay now open the course this is chapter number uh Week number two, so edited version. Doctor Moin, 
शाहनवाजी ओरिजिनल एडिशन बाय डॉक्टर लुकमान so mr nofil i hope you can see the slides and you can see the whiteboard and you can see me writing also hopefully yes sir i can see that okay i want to also change the cursor size so you are the size so that you can see the cursor also change the mouse pointer color so the size of the cursor i want to increase like this okay and the color should be green should be okay so it is easy for you to see <coughs> okay so here we go okay so uh bismillah rahman rahim assalam alaikum <coughs> so uh today we are going to start our week number 2 advanced machining process uh, these slides were basically prepared by dr lakman hakim shah uh, courtesy to him he prepared these slides for uh, last year as well as the previous two semesters uh, i have only done some minor changes and i have done some addition changes <coughs> so let us move forward okay uh, so basically what is machining and then what is the difference between the normal type of machining which is um, conventional machining and then specialized machining processes which are basically available uh, currently in the current technological people are waiting in the lobby uh, mr hafiz okay <clears throat> let us add mr hafiz first <clears throat> okay so mr hafiz is now available so very good time for joining uh, just started the lecture so uh, <clears throat> we are going to proceed uh, with uh, manufacturing and then in manufacturing we start with machining process so as you know that in machining process or in normal machining process the normal machining process means something which have been used since the 1960s 1940s onwards so if i talk about something which has been continuously used from the 1920s and onwards and they have been basically uh, generalized then we call them conventional machining 
conventional machining and we can see in the slides that forging uh, sorry milling turning and drilling are some of the conventional machines machining types which use uh, drill bits okay helical twisted uh, drill bits okay some of them use uh, end milling cutters okay they have got multiple uh, tooths and milling cutters are used then we've got uh, lathe machine lathe machine has its own uh, different type of tool also which is used so these are the different uh, tools mechanical tools which are uh, basically turning machine tool milling machine tool and drilling machine drill bit which have been used since the uh, 1930s 40s something like that <clears throat> so this is all about conventional machining <clears throat> But we have to go into advanced machining processes now, something which are other than conventional machining processes. So we need to move to advanced machining processes. <clears throat> Likewise, so we are going to look into the different types of advanced machining processes. Uh, which have been designed in our course or which have been included in our course. So some of the advanced machining processes are, uh, I think I need to switch this one here and this one here. <clears throat> so some of the advanced uh, machining processes are uh, ultrasonic machining, ultrasonic, machining okay then we have got electric discharge machining then we have got water jet machining then we have got abrasive uh, machining as well Then we have got laser machining. Then we have got electron beam machining. Machining. So these are some of the advanced uh, machining or machining processes which we are going to look into. You can observe or you can see currently that <clears throat> Uh, the medium by which machining is carried out, the medium by which machining is carried out is very, very, very strange and very, very, very different. Okay, what do I mean by medium? <clears throat> Here you can see that we are using vibration energy. Ultrasonic means something which has a very, very high frequency. So we are using vibration energy. We are using vibration energy. Then here we are using electric discharge energy. Here we are using water pressure kinetic energy. In abrasive machining, we are basically using uh, wear wear or erosion technology. Then in lasers, we are using light. And in electron, which is further advanced, we are using electrons. So you can observe or you can see that the medium by which the machining is carried out is very, very different. And each one of them has their own distinct or separate medium by which machining is going to be carried out, <clears throat> okay? <clears throat> so, uh, so here uh, you can see in the slides, uh, machining and then advanced machining. So as I said earlier, some of the examples of conventional machining are turning, drilling, milling, whereas in advanced machining, we are going to use electric discharge machining, chemical machining, and laser or water jet machining. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so uh, 
another uh, process or another tool by which we can differentiate between uh, conventional machining and uh, advanced machining is the different material removal mechanism are observed other than excessive forces which are exercised by the tool which involves physical contact with the workpiece <clears throat> so when we talk about conventional machining okay for example i have got a workpiece okay this is a workpiece okay so we call this work piece we also call this work part we also call this job okay so it has different names anything onto which we are going to carry out some operation is called workpiece now when in conventional machining what it they are saying in the slide is that we need a physical contact between the tool and the workpiece so this is the workpiece and then i have got my drilling tool okay and this drilling tool has got a uh, helical uh, drill bits okay so this is a drill tool called drill bit now notice that in the area where machining is going to be carried out okay the tool and the workpiece are physically in contact so if i am going to zoom this area okay then the tool and the workpiece are physically in contact <clears throat> so when something is physically in contact then uh, what is the problem what is the issue so when something is physically in contact okay then we can have a list of issues or problems that can be associated okay so when i am touching something then there are some issues which will occur issue number 1 is there will be heat transfer okay or there will be uh, what you call thermal there will be chances of thermal shocks now these thermal shocks can damage both the tool and the workpiece so these thermal shocks can damage both the tool and the workpiece another issue is that because of contact friction friction occurs between two material so when friction occurs between two material then it causes excessive wear okay <clears throat> now in the case of excessive wear or removal of material wear is basically the definition of wear is wear is removal of material so we are going to analyze the wear or removal of material for both the tool and workpiece so in case of tool or in case of workpiece and in case of tool now when we talk about wear of uh, material or wear of workpiece 
obviously it is going to help me in machining help in machining or material removal mr material removal but if i talk about tool then it is damaging for the tool and it is going to reduce tool life and increase the cost of manufacturing process <clears throat> so where is desirable for the workpiece and it is not desirable for the tool whereas thermal shocks are not desirable both for the tool and for the workpiece okay <clears throat> so this is another issue of physical contact then another problem of physical contact is that we have to precisely i have to precisely input the coordinates to the machine so that the tool can touch the workpiece if the tool does not touch the workpiece then it cannot do machining process so i have to physically or i have to create a coding so that the tool basically touches the workpiece so i have to precisely control coordinates control coordinates okay so this is another issue of basically uh touching the workpiece so these are the issues of issues of touching the the workpiece so how do i do machining so the question is now okay that because we have problems associated with conventional machining okay we have problems associated with touching the workpiece so what should i do the question the biggest question is is basically how to machine without the tool touching the workpiece okay so this is the question so the answer the answer can be basically divided into three parts number 1 either i mod i i change the workpiece number 2 i change the tool number 3 i change the manufacturing process now i cannot change the workpiece because i have to machine the workpiece this is my requirement i cannot make any changes so what changes i can make i can ch make changes in using a different tool or more importantly more importantly i can basically make changes in the manufacturing process and make modifications so that i do not have to touch the workpiece the most important thing is not to touch the workpiece <clears throat> <clears throat> okay so i will now move on to the next slide so in advanced machining process 
various. Uh, we basically try our best not to touch the workpiece. There are different types of advanced manufacturing process which I have already listed down. Okay. Number one is ultrasonic machining. Number two is advanced jet machining. Number three is electrochemical machining, then laser beam machining, electron beam machining, something like that. Okay. So these are the different types of uh, machining that we are going to study in this course. Okay. So I will move on to the next slide. So here are some of the advantages and limitations of both conventional machining and non-conventional process or machining. In conventional pro machining, the cutting tool and the workpiece are in physical contact with relative motion against each other. This results in friction and significant tool wear. So this is something which we have just now discussed. Here in non-conventional process, we are going to learn that there is no physical contact between the tool and the workpiece. Some tool wear might exist, but rarely this is a significant problem. Material removal rate of the traditional process is limited by the mechanical properties of the work material. And here in non-conventional process, we can easily deal with difficult to cut materials like ceramics, ceramic based tool material, fiber reinforced material, carbides and titanium based alloys. So I want to clear one concept for you guys. <clears throat> Usually the tool of turning machine or you know if the tool tool material is made of a tool holder and we have got a tool insert. So this is the tool holder. And then this is the tool insert. <clears throat> so in the example of the slide, you can see for turning machine, we've got a tool. This tool is usually made of high speed steel HSS. For example, let's say that the hardness of the high speed steel is 600 to 800 Vickers hardness H V Vickers hardness V I C K E. RS. It is basically a scale by which we measure hardness. And using this tool, I want to machine a ceramic. Okay, let's say silicon carbide. So silicon carbide has a hardness of 2000 HV. So while trying to machine this hard material, the tool will wear out, but the workpiece will not wear out. So if ceramic is my workpiece, and I want to machine ceramic with a tool which has less hardness, then the tool will wear and the ceramic will not wear because ceramic has a higher hardness. So anything which will hard will wear the softer material. So harder material always wears or wear down softer material. <coughs> it means that I need to basically use some type of harder material in the lathe machine tool holder. But then there is another problem. Let's say I want to machine tungsten carbide having 2500 HP. And I use silicon carbide here. Then which has a 2000 HP only. Then we cannot do machining of tungsten carbide also. That's another problem. So for conventional machining, there is a limitation of material that we can
machine. So another thing is limitation in terms of material. <coughs> <clears throat> so these are the issues or problem with uh, conventional machining okay <clears throat> so we move on to the next slide now In conventional machining processes, the relative motion be between the tool and workpiece is typically rotary or reciprocating. Thus, the shape of the work surface is limited to circular or flat shapes. Even with CNC system, machining of three-dimensional surface is a very difficult task. So, another problem is geometry complexity. So, number five, complex geometry we cannot machine. Why we cannot machine complex geometry? Because for lathe machine, we have got the tool, okay, which is holding a circular workpiece, and we have got a direction of motion, rotation, one rotation direction, and then we have got the cutting tool, okay, which has a direction of translation. So I can only make something like uh, circular product okay or flat product as mentioned in the point i cannot make turbine blades which are very very complex okay or fan blades which are very very complex and they were a three dimensional intricate systems which are attached to them so different types of fans compressor compressor vanes cannot be manufactured with this type of uh, conventional machining technology. Okay, so different impellers, different turbine, different compressors and uh, different pumps. Okay, compressor, turbine, pumps and fans. These types of impellers or blades having very complex geometry cannot be manufactured by conventional machining. We need advanced machining technology. Okay. <clears throat> so I will move on to the next slide. Utilization of non-conventional machining. When there is a need to process some newly developed difficult to cut material, machining is accompanied, accompanied by excessive cutting forces and tool wear. When there is a need for unusual complex shape that cannot be easily machined or cannot be machined by traditional processes, then we use advanced machining processes or advanced machining technologies. Okay. So as I said earlier in the previous uh, whiteboard that we have got different types of processes and different types of advanced machining processes uses different types of energy. So for instance, we have got mechanical energy, we have got electrochemical energy, we have got thermal energy and then we have got chemical energy these are separately or uh, separately or jointly used okay for example ultrasonic machining use mechanical energy water jet machining uses mechanical then we were electrochemical machining electric discharge machining electrochemical deburring grinding uses electrochemical energy then thermal process are something like electric discharge process electron beam machining laser beam machining 
and then we have last but not least chemical machining in which chemically chemical selectively removes the material from the portion of the workpiece so these are different types of energies which are used in machining operations or advanced machining processes so now let us move on to the first type of machining okay first type of advanced machining process which is ultrasonic machining usm university science malaysia we go ultrasonic machining okay so what is ultrasonic machining and how it removes the material ultrasonic machining has got a high frequency tool this high frequency tools moves up and down at a very high frequency and then this tool is near to the workpiece but it is not touching the workpiece so this is my workpiece or work part or my job this brown color and it is basically uh, some clearance away some amount of clearance away from the workpiece and that workpiece or that gap between the tool and the workpiece is given as 20 to 20 to 25 to 40 micrometer okay so micrometer so 1 mm has 1000 micrometer okay so this is very very small less than less than uh, i think 100 times less than almost uh, 50 to 100 times less than 1 mm so this is characteristics number 1 <clears throat> now the tool amplitude okay the direction of the tool is to and fro up and down but how much the, does the tool moves okay this is the initial position let's say uh, distance i then how much the, does the tool moves from initial position to final position this is also very very less and that is called the amplitude of the tool and this distance is given as 25 to 100 micrometer this distance the distance by which it moves up and down <coughs> so this is called to and fro movement <coughs> so we have got our workpiece and in between the workpiece i have got an abrasive slurry uh, a slurry uh, abrasive container slurry remember this yeah so this is my slurry something which is a mixture of something there are there are different types of fluids or liquids number 1 is plain or distilled water okay this is one type of liquid but if i am going to add in plain and distilled water some abrasives water abrasives sharp edged small particles okay so abrasives are sharp edge abrasive particles so if i add water plain water or plain oil or ethanol or glycerol with abrasive particles then it becomes a mixture called 
slurry. So we have got abrasives which are contained in a slurry are driven against the work by a tool oscillating at a low amplitude of 25 to 100 micrometer and a very high frequency of 15 to 30 kilohertz. So another process parameter is 15 to 30 kilohertz. Okay. What are these things? Amplitude and frequency. These are the process parameters. Okay, something the which I can vary or control. So controllable process parameter. So the controllable process parameter are number one, they are showing amplitude, number two, it looks like frequency also. The gap tool to workpiece cap from this slides we understand that these are the three things that we can control looks like okay so later on in other research papers we will see and other understand what other types of parameters can be controlled okay so so let's see what we can control and what we cannot control so it was first developed in the 1950s and was originally used for finishing EDM surface. Basic process, a ductile and tough tool push against the work with a constant force, a constant stream of abrasive celery passes between the tool and the workpiece. The majority of the cutting action comes in an ultrasonic cyclic force applied. So basically it is creating a ultrasonic cycling force onto the workpiece to remove the material. So the major driving force. So the major driving force. Is this. Which is causing material. Removal. Ultrasonic cycling frequency. Is causing material removal. So there is a basically. Uh, a YouTube link which is given. So I already have this in my slide, but you guys can open also. I think you guys and me can hear them together. OK, so let's visualize this process. How the ultrasonic machining is carried out and it takes place. So if you cannot hear me hear the video, then let me know. Otherwise looks like you can hear hopefully. The sound is not starting. Some stars can I will let you know. Ultrasonic machining. Oops, my sound is not work working. piece. Abrasive slurry. In, In ultrasonic, ultrasonic machining, a tool is made to vibrate at ultrasonic frequency of 20 to 30 kilohertz with abrasive slurry. The vibration of the tool and abrasive slurry removes material in the form of small grains. Machine surface. Elements of ultrasonic machining. Let us see the 3D model of the USM machine. It has Velocity Transformer. It is a specially designed tapper section connected between transducer and tool. Tool. Power source. It consists electronic oscillator and 
amplifier to convert the available electrical energy of low frequency to high frequency power. Transducer. It converts the electrical energy into mechanical vibrations. Working of ultrasonic machine. This previous video, we have seen about elements of USM. Now, this video shows the working of USM. In ultrasonic machining, a tool is made to vibrate at ultrasonic frequency of 20 to 30 kilohertz with abrasive slurry. Workpiece Abrasive slurry The vibration of the tool and abrasive slurry removes material in the form of small grains. Machine surface So, uh, just asking one question. Uh, you guys could hear the video? Yes, Dr. Okay, okay. So, uh, this was uh, just a simple process. Uh, the only thing, the only thing different, the only thing unique is that we have got an ultrasonic uh, tool which up vibrates so high that it creates an impinging force onto the workpiece and that helps us in the removal of material. So uh, as the video described, uh, we have got different parts of ultrasonic machining. <coughs> Number one is the acoustic head. This is the most complicated part of the machine and it provides a static constant force as well as high frequency vibration in the form of amplitude in the form of 25 to uh, 40 micrometer. Then the tool is made of tough ductile, but ductile materials such as soft steel, stainless steel, aluminium and brass and tool wear near to wear near 5 to 10 times faster. Oh, okay, so what they are tell telling us is that preferences preference or the suitable tool material is steel okay soft stainless steel so it should be tough but ductile and these two properties are available in steel if I am going to use aluminium or brass, okay, then what is going to happen is that the amount of tool wear, tool wear is going to significantly increase. So to keep the tool wear at the bay, what we are going to do is we are going to use steel, stainless steel material. The abrasive slurry, so we have got uh, particles of preference, okay, or material preference. This is for the tool, okay. So tool preferences. Cannot see much. So this is tool preference. Number two, we have got slurry, abrasive slurry preference. So in abrasive slurry preference, the material which is recommended is a mixture of liquid water is com most commonly used, but oils or glycerol can be used. 20 to 60 percent abrasive with typical grid size of 100 to 180. 800 okay the common type of abrasive materials are boron carbide so number one i need the medium the medium is water slash oil slash 
کلسرول نو آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ایڈ دا شارپ ایجڈ مٹیریل شارپ ایج پارٹیکلس سو دا شارپ ایج پارٹیکلس آر دا کامن ایگزامپلس آر بورون کاربائڈ بی فور سی اور سلکون کاربائڈ ایس آئی سی اور ڈائمنڈ وچ از بیسکلی فارم آف کاربن اور ایلومینا آلسو کالڈ کورنڈم اے ایل ٹو او تھری از کالڈ کورنڈم اور ایلومینا ٹھیک سو دس از وٹ آئی ول ایڈ اینڈ وین آئی ایم ٹو ایڈ دیم دین دس بیکمس مائی دس از ایکولس ٹو وٹ سلری this is my slurry so it means that i can change the process parameters okay i can change the amplitude i can change the frequency i can change the tool i can change the tool material this is tool gap i can change the tool material i can change the abrasive type okay so these are the parameters that i can control controllable parameters this is very very important when you, whenever you are going to carry out some research then the first thing that you are going to change or control is your machining parameters that is why when we want to create a product so the question is why we control parameters and the answer is because different products uses different shapes dimensional tolerance tolerance dimensional gaps and more importantly material material types so when we have different product with different shapes different dimensional tolerance different gap then we need to control different parameters because for different material there will be always a different parameter in which we will get a better surface finish or a better quality so why we need control parameter because different product needs different shape tolerance gap to get what why why we want to change these things to get better okay quality of machining okay so we control parameters to control the quality of machining of different material but what is quality of machining it depends on our requirement so the quality of machining depends on my requirement by requirement what does i mean by mean whether i want faster production if i want faster production then my parameters will be very different if i want uh, 
ہائی کوالٹی اور سرفیس کوالٹی دین آئی ول یوز ڈفرینٹ پیرامیٹر اوکے سو آئی ہیو دا سیم پروڈکٹ بٹ اف آئی وانٹ ٹو کریٹ فاسٹر پروڈکشن دین اٹ ہیز اے ڈفرینٹ پیرامیٹر اینڈ اف آئی وانٹ ٹو کریٹ اے ہائی سرفیس کوالٹی دین اٹ ہیز اے ڈفرینٹ سیٹ اور کمبینیشن آف پیرامیٹر سیٹ اور کمبینیشن آف پیرامیٹر and this is what is what researchers investigate if you are hired in an r&d department then this is your job your job is that if you are ceo if you are manager if your general manager ask you okay mr nofel you need to increase the production then you will use the parameters which are used for increasing the production but if mr hafizuddin is in the quality department is saying that no i don't want high production i want quality parts because customer demand quality parts and quality surface finish then mr nofel will be using and the parameters which are going to produce the best surface quality so when i am going to go back then i can see that how many parameters i can change 1 2 3 4 5 and there must be others as well so i have got five parameters okay and within five parameters i can change the additional levels so here you can see i can change the tool i can change the brass i can change the uh, type of abrasive also in type of slurry material also so if i let's say i want to make a table okay process parameters table okay then number 1 is amplitude <laughs> number 1 amplitude okay so i want to select some type of uh, amplitude uh, how much should i use okay so let's say i use 25 50 75 these are levels level of parameter so this is level number 1 level number 2 this is level number 3 then number 2 i can change the frequency frequency i can change let's say uh, 15 20 25 then number 3 is the gap okay i can change to 25 30 35 okay if you want to do further investigation if you want your research to be very strong then you add level number 4 100 30 40 this is only the controllable parameters then you add material tool steel aluminum brass then the medium the slurry medium medium is water ethanol glycol or oil then number 6 we have slurry abrasive we have got corundum alumina silicon carbide diamond uh, bottles boron carbide
Okay, let's say here we've got brass, aluminum, brass, steel, and let's say bronze. So we have got six parameters and we've got four levels. So if you want to perform the whole test, then you need to carry out design of experiment. If you want to test each and every single parameter, then I forgot, but I think this will be 6 to the power 4 combinations. Is it 4 to the power 6 or 6 to the power 4? I'm not sure, but these will be the combinations that you need to check or you need to test. Okay. <clears throat> So this was all about ultrasonic machining, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open some research papers in front of you guys. And then when the, we are going to validate that in the research papers, in the high quality top notch journals, what are the parameters which people are trying to study, okay? Yeah. So I, you guys can also do the same exercise. So I will open yeah. Google Chrome, okay, in front of you guys. Okay, then I will open Google Scholar. Google Scholar is a website which is used to open different types of research articles. Okay. Now I will write here ultrasonic machining. Okay, now you cannot see this. Let me increase the size. So now you can see the research papers have opened. 1990. Yeah, sorry, there was internet glitch. Okay. There was internet glitch. Okay. So yeah, so ultrasonic machining since 2022, okay? So here we go, paper number one, optimization of process parameters. You see, the first thing you can see is just what you learned just now, optimization of process parameters using integrated EHP TOPSYS method. So they are using these people are also 
doing what doing optimization of parameter optimization of parameter for what we will look and see in the abstract what is written optimization of which parameter and what parameter for what for surface quality or faster production or for better time let's see so i will open this paper okay uh, you guys cannot see so we'll increase the size so optimization of process parameters in ultrasonic machining using integrated ESP topsys method. Okay, it has been written by Department of Mechanical Engineering, Abacus Institute of Engineering and Management, India. And then the other contact is also India. So this is an Indian paper. So the process by which holes and cavities are formed in a metal workpiece with the help of shape tool, high frequency and abrasive slurry is known as ultrasonic machining process. OK, this is something which you learned just now. Its working principle is completely different from other traditional machining processes such as laser beam machining and electrical discharge devices. OK, so what have they have done? I want to see what they have done. So. In this research, OK, here we go. In this research paper, stainless steel is used as a tool material. So just now we learn stainless steel is used as a tool material. Okay. Uh, in the whole process and zirconia bioceramic plate is taken as the workpiece. So you see they have got a very specialized workpiece. That is why in 2022 they are carrying out the optimization of parameters of the ultrasonic machining for this very specialized zirconia bioceramic. Okay. So let me download this paper also and send to you guys also so that you guys can also see this paper and apply to what we have learned today. <clears throat> so I downloaded this article. And I will send you guys this article. Okay, here are you guys. So, <clears throat> so you guys must have received the article. So can you please open this article? So after you open the research article, now you can see. Uh, OK, so in the abstract what they have written. Uh, the first thing which matches our study, what we have done today, is that they have used in this research, where is in this research? This in this research paper, stainless steel is used. Okay, so let's highlight that. Stainless steel is used as a tool material in the whole process. Zirconia is my workpiece. Okay. <coughs> so zirconia plate is taken as a Workpiece. <clears throat> the process parameters are con are considered as feed rate. Okay, so we did not have feed rate in our slides. Slurry concentration. Okay, we have this, but not the concentration. Power rating. Okay, grid size. Okay, so we should add in our uh, in our, where is the? <clears throat> so 
so another parameter okay is number 7 feed rate number 8 is power i think power is used for frequency only slurry concentration so we have slurry concentration slurry concentration what else grid size so number 9 grid size so now you can see we have got 10 total of 10 parameters okay through this work it is found that response highly correlated with the correlation coefficient okay 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 the optimization studies are carried out on ultrasonic machine with multi response okay okay what is the result now usm produce high quality parts you see high quality parts so their target was high quality parts so you, how do you write this in the form of uh, so what you are going to do guys is <clears throat> so in in our research paper so how you will write this sentence in a research paper so in a work carried out by uh bikash b i k a s s bikash et al what does et al means bikash and other authors bikash et al when was the publication date publication date was 2000 and where is the publication date publication date is Yeah, available online. So, from the Google Scholar, we could see published in twenty twenty two. Okay, ultrasonic machine USM ultrasonic machine optimization optimization of process parameters. Which process parameter? Uh, optimization of process parameters of power. okay uh, slurry concentration and feed rate so they carried out power frequency and slurry concentration optimization of what optimization of which material optimization of bioceramic zirconia so optimization of zirconia bioceramic so zirconia bio ceramic so they did the optimization of parameters of which material of optimization of zirconia bio ceramic for what for higher surface quality for higher surface quality so for higher surface quality so when you write your assignment okay and when you research or when you cite a paper then this is how we write the work of other people this is how we introduce the work of other people in our own research papers how do we refer to others this is how we refer to other people okay and higher is my reference number this is reference number 1 and in the bibliography which you have already done in your undergraduate thesis in the bibliography what will happen is you will download the uh you will download the uh citation okay so citation you download how cite this say as uh, export to text citation so this is my citation text okay a copy and then i later on i put it in my uh, uh this is my citation 
and I need to put it in my bibliography number one. Uh, B R okay at twenty twenty two. Title of the journal. What is the name of the journal? Journal of Material Proceeding. Producing volume number one, issue number two, page number twenty two thirty XYZ. So this is how we will. Oh, sorry, you cannot see. So this is how you will basically. This is this is how you need to. We need to write research. This is how systematically research is written. <clears throat> So what we learned so far in our slides, you can now see it practically in research paper also. OK, and if we move down. Then I'm sure that he listed down all the other parameters also. OK, so this is the optimization process. OK. Optimization process. This is their machine. So they've got ultrasonic transducer, holding clamp, transmitting cone, the horn. Horn is the tool uh, holder and the slurry pipe. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So just now I made a table also for you guys, the process perimeter table, and he also made process perimeter table. Okay. This is different process parameters, grid size, slurry concentration, power rating, feed rate, and these are the units. OK, and these are the symbols. OK, they have given symbol for each of this and you can see the level. So here you can see the level. So they will vary concentration by 16, 24, 34, 44, 53. So this is how a processed perimeter table is written. <clears throat> and basically they will optimize the best parameter. And then they will basically produce a result. So if I go down, OK. So this is these are the number of experiments they have get carried out. So if you see or look at this table, then this is serial number one. And this is experiment number one to experiment number 25. Okay. And then this they have varied, they have varied the process parameter, grid size, slurry, and power, and then the feed rate. So these are the experiments that they have carried out. So this was and what they measured, they have measured uh, conclusion. If I go to the conclusion, the work was done. This is this to for to give a desired shape. Each they they will on yeah, this is this paper did not include a lot on results. Okay, it was only about process parameter. But we will open other papers later on and then we will understand about uh, these things. <clears throat> so uh, when we talk about ultrasonic machining, OK. And we need to know about uh, the advantages and disadvantages. Uh, so how is the basic, basic cutting action Completed brittle fracture causes by impact of abrasive grains due to the tool vibration, cavitation and induce and erosion occurs, and chemical erosion is caused by the slurry. So basically, there are three forcing factors. So for material removal, MRR, there are three forcing factors. Number one is brittle fracture, number two is cavitation. And number three is chemical erosion. OK, chemical erosion is due to the slurry. 
cavitation is because of the ultrasonic uh, vibration and brittle fracture is because of the grains abrasive grains <clears throat> so these are three forcing factors because of which machining is carried out so it can be used to cut blind, through and blind holes. Uh, the process is best suited for poorly conducting and hard brittle materials. And there is little production of heat and stresses. This is a very important point which I told you guys. To avoid heat and stresses, we need ultrasonic machining or advanced machining processes. So the disadvantage is very, very important. And the disadvantage is that the material removal rate is very, very small or the production time is very, very small. That is why in the research paper they are trying to increase the production rate also. Sometimes glass is used on the back side of the brittle material for safety protection. The critical parameters to control the process are so here also they have given some recommendation. What we should control tool frequency, amplitude, material, abrasive grid size, material feed force, slurry concentration and viscosity also. So we forgot to add viscosity. Number 10 is viscosity. Each parameter has a separate effect on the machining process. Uh, so this is an exercise exercises in this exercise we are going to list down the important parameters that researchers are using for ultrasonic machine machining using sources such as google scholar science direct and open access research gate academia so what i want you guys to do is just open any paper from google scholar or science direct with ultrasonic machining and try to see which parameters are listed Okay, which parameters are listed and what is the output? What they want to optimize or if, if not, what is the output material removal is output or quality is output. Or surface roughness R A is the output that is something you need to find in this exercise. Okay. So uh, I will leave for about 20 minutes and I will leave you guys for this exercise. Uh, is it OK? OK, sir. Oh, I cannot hear you. Sorry. Uh, uh, can you speak again? OK, doctor. OK, OK. So uh, please go through this exercise 20 minutes. I I, I meet you around 420. Huh? OK, so I will I will give you another link uh, after 20 minutes okay, for the exercise. So I will end the call and then I will start a new meeting or a new schedule meeting. OK, so in 20 minutes we meet. Thank you. OK. OK, Rita.